Hi, welcome back to Tech Tip Tuesday. I am CEO of Carbon, Steve Dynan. I'm Jeff Westfall, product strategist and lead racing driver. So we're gonna do another suspension installment today. And this is my favorite part of tuning a suspension system, the relationship of springs to anti-roll bars. Yep. Uh, most people really misunderstand this. Um, they assume that if I can just lower the car and make it stiffer and I can add anti-roll bars on and I make them as stiff as possible, everything's gonna be great. But the springs and bars actually are opposing forces in a car. Completely, and they work as a system. Yes, and they work as a system. And you can tune how a car is on entry to a corner, the balance, the center of the corner and the exit by the relationship of these components. Or the rates of those components. Yes, and that changes the relationship. It yep. changes the rates. So how an anti-roll bar actually works is when you actually roll into a corner, the outside suspension system goes up and it flexes the bar and this resists roll because it's mounted inside the car. But it's attached it, here in the middle. Yes, but what it also does as the bar is bigger, as she unloads and picks up the inside tire. Correct. Okay. And what this does is it reduces the tension of the tire on the road. The inside tire. The inside tire. Yep. The outside tire is fully loaded. The bar is flexed. And as it flexes, it pulls up the inside tire and uh, reduces the tension on the inside tire on the road. Now the spring is actually an opposing force. When the, when the car rolls, as the spring extends, the springer will push that anti-roll bar down and flex it and increase the tension of the tire on the road. So if you can imagine a car turning into a corner, the unloaded or the high side of the car, the wheel is being pulled up by the bar, but it's being pushed down by your spring. Yes. So tuning of the relationship of these two is super important. It's also why we do these progressive coils here, mm -hmm. because in the, as the spring unloads, this adds tension and we can tune this rate of the spring to match the force of the bar to get the tension that we want. So that as a system, you've created less roll with your car as you've put bigger tires and made more grip and you're driving the car aggressively, but you're also keeping your inside tires in contact with the road. Right. And this adds a lot of stability on corner entry. Uh, reduces oversteer, snap oversteer and corner entry, and reduces understeer and corner exit. We're gonna get into a model car here that has uh, adjustable coilover kits and bars on it. We're gonna zoom in on that and show you a little bit more about it. Okay, so we're gonna use this model car to talk about spring and bar relationships, but let's first talk about the movements of a car. Pitch is the car going back and forth this way. Roll. Heave is the car up and down. And diagonal, like when you're entering a corner or exiting, that's called warp. So when our anti-roll bar and spring relationship occurs is in warp more than anything else, because as you're braking or accelerating, the bar goes up and down together. It doesn't change the load one side versus the other very right. much. Um, but, and in the middle of the corner, when you're loaded all the way, then you're sort of in a static condition. But when you're entering a corner and the front end of the suspension goes down and the rear and inside goes up, the anti-roll bar wants to hang that inside tire in the air. That's what we were talking about earlier. Spring wants to push it down. A real stream example of this, if you've ever seen a front wheel drive race car on the racetrack? Yes. Where it comes in the corner, the rear tire is actually in the air? Yep. That's because they understeer so bad from the front wheel drive that they put a monster rear sway bar on the car, anti-roll bar, uh, and that actually pulls the tire in the air. Now on a rear wheel drive car, or all wheel drive car, we don't want the tire in the air because it's making the car go forward. Yep. And if it's in the air, it can't provide acceleration. Correct. So what we want to do is we want to tune the relationship of the spring and the bar as we add more bar it will give less tension and the car will rotate faster in corner entry. If we add more spring in relation to the bar, it will push the tire down and make the car understeer more in corner entry. Same thing occurs on exit. We go down in the back and up in the front. And again, if the inside tire is unloaded or in the air, and I've seen that on rear wheel drive cars, on race cars, and the race 100%. car in the air, this tire can't provide any grip. And that causes what's called a corner exit understeer or shoves the nose as race car drivers will say, sometimes they get in the throttle and the car won't turn. So we want the tire to be touching the ground so that when the car accelerates, it will actually still be able to be steered and stay on the road so the driver doesn't have to lift off the gas on corner exit. And what I'm gonna say here is that most of the undesirable characteristics that people report about driving their vehicle or driving their car on a track or having an issue with handling is usually warp. It's usually the blending of the controls yes. on the way into the corner or the eyes see the exit and the eyes go, I'm leaving, goes to throttle with a lot of wheel in it. And you get that symptom that you just described, right? Where your inside wheels off the ground, right. your car starting to shove the nose or pick up an understeer because as it squats to the back, the weight falls off the front axle yep. and you can't match the radius you're trying to. Right. So what we really want is a car to be stable on entry so we can carry as much speed as possible into the corner and you're the race car driver. And this is what me and Jeff work at the racetrack. And if you watch the Michelin pilot races in IMSA and our BMW, uh, car number 39, you'll see that we almost always have one of the best handling cars on the racetrack because of this relationship that we work on together as a team. Yep. 
We're really efficient on the way into the corner and the way out of the corner, those warp states that Steve was talking about. And what I will say is that in coaching drivers and other parts of my career, that's the state a driver feels and talks about the most. If you're gonna have an undesirable handling trade is generally on the way into the corner when you're asking it to bend down to the center of the apex, or when you're trying to add throttle and leave the corner. Those warp phases where the bar and spring work together is super critical for your feel, but also for the precision of the car. Yes, and a lot of engineers too want to make one change at a time, and I will say to the drivers, making one change is actually making two changes because you're not only making, let's say, the anti-roll bar stiffer, you're also changing the relationship of the spring to the bar. Correct. So you have to view the suspension as a, as a holistic thing. Whole uh, system. Whole system. Um, I will oftentimes make two, three, I think my record is maybe five changes at a time. Yep. <laughs> and sometimes the drivers will question that, but it's because I have a deep understanding of these relationships and I'm trying to keep them together while I rebalance the car. Thank you for joining us again on Tech Tip Tuesday. Make sure you like and subscribe so you don't miss any future episodes. And head to Carbon.com for more of these installments on your suspension system and or our products that we offer to help you get the most out of your vehicle.